Good morning, everybody, once again. Hope all of you are doing well. Welcome to the week seven. We're at the seventh week of our class. Uh, welcome to all the e-learning students as well. Um, we're going to be uh, focusing on uh, a fresh new set or a fresh new chapter today. Um, if you all remember, we had spoken about uh, uh, the process, the counseling process, the last two weeks. We uh, looked uh, uh, largely at exploration. We looked at understanding, and we looked at action. And we did a couple of role plays also last week. So uh, going forward, we are going to be learning about skills. Um, what are some of the skills that we need to uh, really take us through this process of counseling? Now, all of if if you look at um, all that we're learning, it's how you as a counselor will be able or uh, can can make use of uh, some form of foundational skills that will help in that in this helping relationship okay so that's what we are going to be looking at majorly today um so before we before we begin just to quickly give you like like an overview of what we are also going to be doing um we we are looking at how we can enhance the counseling relationship so just to for us to understand once again what a counseling relationship it's the uh, it's the connection between a counselor and counselee and the quality and the strength of that connection between the counselor and the counselee so we looked at some things of empathy the attitudes that a counselor needs to have which is empathy genuineness unconditional positive regard right and um, we we also look at how listening and showing understanding are important to build this relationship with your counseling. Uh, so when when we look at counseling, counseling consists of mainly two things. One is the counselor's relationship with the counselee, and also the counselee's relationship with the counselor. Now, in order for the counselor's relationship with the counselee to be enhanced, we need to look at things that we call as micro, micro skills. So all counseling employs certain skills or certain patterns of skills, which we know, which are known as micro skills. So all systems, any kind of counseling that you do needs to have a certain pattern of skills. And that's what is called as micro skills. So the micro skills that the counselor employs or uses is that which helps the counselor to move in the process of counseling. Okay, I'll repeat that once again. The skills or the micro skills. When we say micro, these are, although they are small skills, they are highly important for the to help the to help the counselor to put, move the counselee from into the process of counselling. So these skills are basic skills that is involved in effective relationships. OK, so uh, I uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll try and look at it through, uh, let's say, a real life example so that it's, it's a little bit more uh, understandable. OK, so suppose the engine of your car has stopped. OK, what is it that you would need to do it to get it to a working condition? So one, you will need to take it to a mechanic who is skilled to work on the care of the car. Right. So you need to take it to a skilled person. You will need the right kind of tools to open the engine, to look at the wires, to look at the parts. You need tools to do that. Right. And third, there are certain conditions that you may need to get your car to start working, like you need to charge your car battery, or you may need to add water. or uh, So you have to take your car through a conducive condition 
to get it to start working. So there are three things. That is, you need a person, right, who has skill. You can't just take it to the to your milkman or to your postman. To, you know, if your car breaks down, you need to take it to a mechanic who has skill. The second is you need the right kind of tools to open the engine, right? You can't take a kitchen knife, right? But you need certain tools to ensure that you're able to open it. And third is you need to activate some conditions which will help the process to change. So similarly, in counseling, when people come for help, you need to use certain skills, okay, certain foundational skills that are needed for the counseling to be effective. You need certain tools on which a lot of those uh, connections uh, depend on. And lastly, you need to create some conditions where positive change can take place. Okay, And this is what we call as micro skills. They're not just skills, but they're like tools, and it helps to improve the condition of the person who is coming to you. So when we're looking at micro skills, we uh, we need to know, number one, uh, why do we use it? Who should be using it? And what is it? So there are many skills that are used during a counseling session. And that's the next slide that I will come to. But the question is, why do we need to? Why should we be skilled? We need to be skilled so that we can establish a good relationship and help the counselees in their sessions. Okay, because if we, it's like this. Um, think of um, at your workplace. Now, if you, if you are in a workplace and you need to have a presentation, you need some skills to do your presentation. One, you may need to know how to operate your PPT. The second is you may need to be skilled in the language that you are speaking. You may be, you, third, you need to have certain skills in the subject that you're talking about. So all of this, you establish, you build those skills so that your presentation or your, uh, your um, work can become effective. So similarly, in counseling, these are used because we need to build a good relationship and help to bring the counselees involved in the sessions that may be helpful. So who should use these skills? These are used, yes, by a counselor so that it can help in your communication. All of these skills that we look at helps in your communication with your counselee. Now, what is it? They are certain observable actions of you as a counselor that will appear to help the change in the session. OK, so it's something that maybe your counselee will observe that you are doing that will help them to move from um, it being a to help it being a positive experience in the session. All right. Now, I'll just give you a few of the kind of micro skills, generally some of it that we are going to be dealing with. There are a lot more. But what is sufficient for us um, through through helping us through the process of counseling, these I think would be sufficient. And we're going to be looking at this and a few more. So the skills of attending, responding skills, questioning skills, and influencing skills. OK? Uh, so today, we are, we are going to focus only on the attending skills, okay? before focusing on the attending skills. So when you look at attending, uh, what do you think the word, where does the word attending come from? Where do you think the word attending comes from? Come on, students, you could either chat or open up and speak. Where does the word attending come from? Yes, the word attending comes from, thanks, Prince. Yes, the word comes from attention, which means you are paying enough attention to uh, to your counselee to help them to connect with you. All right. So this attending is actually a behavioral way or behavioral part of building that connection. Right. They, the, so anytime you meet a new person, 
um, you're looking for certain ways in which they are able to connect you, connect with you. Okay. And how do you how do you know that someone is connecting to you on a natural basis? How do you know that someone is connecting to you? I'm talking about new people, okay? So when a new person comes to you, how do you know that they're attending to you? What are your thoughts? I think Sorry, Jacqueline, I can't hear you. Okay, Jacqueline, you're not audible. Okay, so P Prince has written facial expressions, body language, eye contact. Yes. Right. So that's one way that you begin to infer whether they're interested to talk to you, whether they're looking at you, what their body language is, all of that. Excellent, right? So these are some ways that people begin to know whether, I mean, you begin to know whether they're paying attention to you. So similarly, uh, your attending skills as a counselor, your attending skills actually encourages your counseling to talk and show and and it may show me that they that uh, uh, it may show them that they that i am interested in what they are saying or what they're sharing so the way that i behave or the way that i show something gives an indication to the others to my counselor my counselee that i am interested or i am um, keen to hear what they want to tell me. So that's the purpose of these attending skills. Uh, so you are encouraging through my skills, I'm encouraging my counselee to be open and to, and to talk. Okay. So when is this used? When are these attending skills used? These attending skills are used throughout the entire counselling process. And it's especially important in the beginning stages of a rapport building. So it says, right, um, your first impression is the best impression. That is the first time you see someone. And if they have caught your attention, you may remember them. Or you want to continue to interact with them because of the way that they made you feel. Like, for example, when you have gone to a doctor, when the doctor has been um, significantly interested in you and, you know, called you by name or maybe spoken to you and looking you in the eye and showing that sense of interest, you remember that person. But for the doctor who just looks at the paper, maybe keeps writing, tells you three prescriptions and gives it to you and sends you away, you don't have an extremely good opinion of it, right? So this it usually happens in your initial stages, but that doesn't mean um, it doesn't continue on through the counseling process. It is there, but it's mostly important in your initial stages of uh, establishing a rapport. So what does it mean? What is it? It is, in short, it is paying attention to. That is, as a counselor, I'm paying attention to what my counselee is not just saying, but what they're doing, what they're probably behaving, maybe even things that they're not saying. I'm able to pick up through their uh, through their body language, right? So, me paying uh, uh, attending skills is paying attention to whatever the counselee is saying and doing. Okay, now attending skills uh, can be divided or uh, uh, there are there are three ways that you can attend. One is attending non-verbally and verbally. The second is attending by listening or by observing. And the uh, by, by listening, the third is by observing. So these are the three areas or the categories by under which that you you can um, you can look at it as a headache, right? So I have to attend to my counselee with non-verbally, that means I may not be saying any words, or verbally with words, or by listening. And the third is by just observing. They're not saying anything, but I'm just observing what, what they're doing or what's happening. 
Okay. So let's look at each one of them one by one and uh, try and maybe unpack some of it. Okay. Um, so attending behavior, like I said, is uh, defined as supporting your counselee um, with appropriate verbal, visual, uh, vocal, and body language. Okay. Now this is known as the three V's plus the B. The three V's being visual eye contact, the way that you use your eyes to attend, or vocal qualities. The way now vocal qualities doesn't mean how sweet your voice is, okay? That doesn't mean that. Vocal quality is the way that you using your uh, voice to, you know, the way that you undulate your voice, the way that you 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 your tone is, or the way that your pitch is, the way that it sounds, you know, the volume, all of that matters in paying attention. And lastly, it is the verbal, that is what you are saying, the words that you are saying. Plus the B, that is the body language. You're attending to the body language of the person. Like, for example, if your client, if your counselor is sitting with their eyes closed like this, it indicates something to you, right? Or you're sitting with your eyes closed like this when your counselor is talking. It indicates something. It may indicate that either you're thinking or you're falling asleep or you're bored. It could mean many, many things. But when you are attending, you are ensuring that you do it with all this, your, uh, your verbal, your visual, your vocal, as well as your body language. Okay. Now, it is important to understand um, that you know because we live in a multicultural world world that some actions or gestures or things we may do or behave may be appropriate in one culture but not in other cultures so we have to be aware of what is culturally appropriate for each of the people that we are seeing so if we are not aware of this it can break um, those connections and that relationship uh, may not be so established that the counselee may choose to leave. Like, for example, um, uh, in maybe the way that you're sitting, right, in your counselling session, really uh, sometimes can be appropriate in some settings. Like uh, if you are, um, maybe you're sitting in front of your counselor and you're, you're sitting cross-legged, you know, you're putting both your legs on the chair and sitting in. It appears, if you as a counselor are doing that, it almost looks like it is a informal setting, right? That it's a setting that you're not going to take anybody seriously. Or if you put up both your legs and, you know, sit with both your legs in front of you and hug, the, hug your legs like that, right? It, it indicates something. So we have to be careful about, um, about the people we talk to because in their culture, some of the way that you may sit could be disrespectful. Like, for example, if you um, put one leg on top of the other, you know, not, not, not cross-legged, but you, you kind of sit too comfortably that one leg is on top of the other. And, you know, it could... It could mean something else for the person uh, on the other end. So to be sensitive about what are some of the gestures or the actions that we may we may do. OK. Uh, are you all here with me? Because uh, I haven't been able to see you. I, I don't know if everyone is OK. All right. OK, everybody's here. All right. OK, thank you, Anand. OK, OK, Anand, Anand. Got it, got it, got it, got it. OK, all right. So um, yeah, one OK, so we're looking at the three Vs and the B. So we look at visuals, vocals, verbals, body language. So we'll just take each of them uh, a little in depth. So visuals is the uh, eye contact that you that you use when you are meeting with uh, with people, the good eye contact. So maintaining good eye contact is how one of the ways, 
excuse me, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Is one of the ways a counselor can convey interest, confidence, and involvement in the story of the counseling. Okay. So for clients, uh, for counselees who may have difficulty with closeness, uh, making eye contact can be an important vehicle of change. You know, when you when there are some people who may not um, cannot make that eye contact, when you do it in a in a in moderation, it can be quite helpful. So even when you're having eye contact, please remember that you shouldn't stare, right? Eye contact doesn't mean you don't take away your eyes from their eyes at all, right? It it may it you should have those natural breaks in your eye contact. Like you're looking at them and maybe you look while you're talking, you're looking somewhere else and then you look back at them and you know you're looking down and then you look back at them. So then there isn't that that sense that you are you know glued onto their faces. So there should be natural breaks in that eye contact and there should be a certain ebb and flow in the way that you look at them as you collect your thoughts and listen to their stories. Right now breaks in eye contact on the uh, uh, you need to also notice that when a counselee has breaks in eye contact like they are breaking away from you they're looking aside and they're saying part of the story it could mean that they're looking away probably because some story really distresses them right they keep away like especially when a person's crying and they want to hide their pain from you they're not going to look at you and keep crying right they may they may look down and and uh, feel a little ashamed that they're even bringing but then it helps you see that you, when you actually continue that eye contact, it helps you helps them see that you're still interested. Okay. Now, uh, so uh, again, so yeah. Okay. So it's good that you maintain this eye contact when you're talking to the person. Uh, however, like I said, it should not make them uncomfortable when you stare intensely at them. So in order to break this. Um, I this this staring eye contact break eye contact every five seconds seconds or so. So when you're breaking the eye contact, don't look uh, um, you know don't look down sometimes as this might indicate the ending of your part of the conversation. Like when you're saying something and then you look down, it looks as if you've ended it. Instead, what you can do is looking to the side or looking. Um, maybe a little up, as if you're remembering something, okay? Uh, and or the other thing, other thing that you can do is listen to them. Uh, use the triangle. What does that triangle mean? Like when you're staring at their face at a at a specific point, it looks as if you're intensely staring. But it is to move um, when you're looking at them to move from one eye to the side to the mouth and then back to the side, then the side, the mouth, so that, you know, when you are sharing or talking to the person, when they're talking to you and you're looking at them, you're not focusing, staring. You're not staring, but you're focusing on the left eye, then you move to the right, then come down, then again, you do that process, OK? Uh, so so it's important to, to do that. Now, when you are, uh, again, when you're listening to someone, it can be, uh, it can be off-putting if you either stare at them too hard or even if you look away too much uh, to the uh, to the to the other side okay so it's it's essential to be sensitive to the differences in eye contact and how eye contact is usually maintained okay um, all right next comes vocal now, vocal is the way that you use your, uh, uh, the way that you use your voice, okay, and how you uh, how you use it to uh, to bring out um, maybe the importance of things that they're saying or the emotions that's been expressed. So we we know that emotions are generally frequently conveyed through your <clears throat> voice, through your tone, or through your pitch uh, when you're the the pitch 
the, the pacing and the volume has a direct impact on the way someone responds to you emotionally. If someone is at a high pitch, you know that they are fairly excited. When the, someone's on a low pitch and slow, you know that they are calm. When when someone is, um, you know, in, in, a, in a place of inquiry, you can see that there's always a lot of shifting of a thought, shifting a voice, shifting of things to do here and there. Okay? So remember that your voice can actually help to either create a, a, a soothing, uh, uh, an anxious, uh, a soothing and anxiety regulating atmosphere for the person. And it must communicate warmth and interest and not really boredom and lack of caring. So these are some things that uh, you're hoping your voice can do. Now, in all of this, you would also, there can be even silence. Now, silence is also a way of supporting what your uh, counselee is saying, right? So to that when, when they're saying something and you don't speak and you're silent, it helps them to see that you're also in understanding of the situation. So we need to learn to use our voice as a therapeutic tool. So that becomes a big tool for us as we are relating to people. Um, OK, now in verbals, verbal, so we finished vocal, we finished uh, visual. Now we're into verbal. Now, when we're looking at uh, verbals and what observations are being made there, um, what we need to focus specifically on is what we call as tracking. Now, verbal tracking, wh what does it mean? It is actually that you are following what your um, counselee is telling you. And you the, the goal uh, in the verbal um, a part is to keep the dialogue going where the counselees lead, uh, the where the where the counselees may say something and you just follow where they want to go so even as they're talking they may say okay i want to talk to you today about my family and then up sometimes they say i want to talk to you about work so you're actually following them to understand them a whole lot better Okay, so this is specifically important at the important, uh, sorry, at the beginning stage of uh, counseling, because this is a time where they make their first impression. Uh, you, you're making your first impression as your counsel, as their counselor. So uh, you know you need, you may need to be in a place to um, uh, continue to track them, you know, continue to verbally track them so that they, they know that you are being heard, okay? Now, uh, so in this verbal thing, the actually the counselee is the one who does the majority of the talking. That's at least an 80% of talking is what the counselee does. And it's only 20% that you, that you may be involved in. Because if you're helping them talk, if you're helping them to relate, they may be in a far place, uh, better place. So clients generally should be talking most in the uh, session. Uh, also, to avoid the urge to ask too many questions. So what happens is um, when we are asking questions, we don't stick at the question. But we continue, you may say, what's your mother's name? And then I said, where does your mother work? And then, um, uh, you know, what is she doing now uh, if she's retired? So there are so many questions that does not help work the, um, uh, does not help that issue at that point of time, OK? So resist the urge of asking too many uh, questions. Another thing that you can focus on is to use minimal encouragers, like when your, when uh, your client is narrating a big story to you, rather than um, you know cut them off at every point, the idea is to continue to say, "Uh huh." Mm. So they call minimal encourage. So you are urging them to continue their story, to continue what they would like to say through a 
through these things. And these are what we call as verbal, uh, uh, verbal encourages. Okay. Okay. The next is the body language. So we looked at verbals, we looked at uh, vocals, and we looked at uh, visual. Okay. Now we're looking at the body language. Now the body language, uh, uh, what what happens is your through whatever is happening to us, our body is uh, our body tends to respond non-verbally also. So the body language is looking at the non-verbal messages we send through um, our postures, our gestures, our facial expressions, or our physical in, uh, appearance, and all of this is what really shows interest. So the way that um, we send those gestures, those movements, that uh, that if, even those physical appearance, even the way that we show it or we send it through, impacts impacts this. Now, your body position should be able to convey to your counselee that you are interested and that you are involved. So, positive body language is demonstrated maybe by a relaxed posture, a steady eye contact nods of the head and an occasional smile or some kind of a uh, uh, happy experience. So this 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 is what you would look for. So you adopt a open, attentive body posture, lean forward slightly, use good gestures, head nods, uh, appropriate physical appearance. So even the way that you dress up or the way that you're too shabby can put off the Counseling and also the distance that the both of you sit in, as well as mirroring the client. What does mirroring the client mean? Now, mirroring the client is when um, you know when you're you are paying attention to them so much so that whatever your uh, uh, whatever your messages are, whatever your um, bodily or body messages are, gets picked up by your counseling as well so it is it is to uh, uh, like for example let's say a counselee sitting forward and really speaking with a with a with a short tone so when you mirror that now that this doesn't mean you copy them so much that they begin to feel uncomfortable but that you know if they are sitting forward you're also in a slightly um, alert kind of a position. If they're sitting back, you also could be in a slightly um, relaxed position. So all of this affects what we call as the attending skills. Now quickly, um, uh, there's an acronym for attending non-verbally to your to your uh, to your counseling. Okay, so it's called SOLEP, which means S is to sit to sit squarely facing your counselee. O is an open and non-defensive posture. L is to lean slightly towards the, the client. Um, uh, e is having a good eye contact. And R is being relaxed and comfortable. OK? OK, I want to stop here. And uh, is there any specific um, questions that you may have? No questions at all. OK, I'd like to show you a small video. Uh, if you're not able to hear it, please let me know. Uh, but yeah, so, so I'd like you to pay attention to this video. And it shows you two things. It shows you what correct attending skills is and what incorrect attending skills is. So let's just have a look at this.
you can't hear, is it? Not able to hear. Mm. Anthony, you can hear. Anthony, are you able to hear? No. Okay. Okay, just give me a minute. Let me try once again. Let me know if you can hear. Okay. Okay. What I'll do the what I'll do is I'll probably uh, send it to you on the um, on the uh, stream and I'll put it up for the e-learning students. Uh, you could go through it. I think there's a problem with my Google Meet. I'm not able to click the audio button. Okay, so uh, you can have a look at what is what is the way that uh, the flawed behavior and there are. It's just not attending behavior, but there are many things. So you can have a look at the video. I'll put the link up on the stream so that you can have a look at it. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to stop here. Uh, are there any specific questions that you have? Uh, up until now. Any questions? Okay. Um, I don't think we can. Um, we could probably do a role play. I know it's going to be hard doing it on a uh, on a uh, on a Google Meet, but nevertheless, I think we can still try. Um, and I think we will look at this. So I've, I've got two, two, three examples, and maybe. Sorry. Okay. Um, we could probably look at. Uh, the second one, OK? A nervous and scared teenager is forcibly brought by her parents to you, OK? Um, all right, I think there's a question. Jackin's written, uh, taking into consideration woman to woman, can we hold their hands to comfort and console, tap or up their shoulder? I mean, because when we meet person, it, that's real. yes, you can. You can. Um, again, maybe you know you. It it really also. Uh, you 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 should be able to have a certain. You know, understand what may be a limit, like more than their shoulder, uh, their hands may be a better thing to do. And this, of course, always recommended man to man and woman to woman, rather than the opposite gender. Okay, because in some cultures it can be absolutely uh, not acceptable. All right. Okay. So so let's uh, let's look at the second one. A nervous and scared teenager is forcibly brought by her parents to you. Okay. So um, can we have some? Can we have some uh, volunteers? Someone who's a nervous and a scared teenager, uh, and we need a counselor as well. And yeah, you may need to put your videos on so that we can see the nervousness of the teenager. Okay, so who'd like to who'd like to um, volunteer?
Come on, students. Quick, quick. Okay, if you all don't, I'll have to pick out names. So it's better you all just uh, agree and come forward. It's okay. This is a learning. So it's okay. It, it does, you're, you're not meant to be perfect. It's a learning. It's only then like, like that you learn. So I need a nervous and a scared teenager. Maybe you're just scared to sit in front of a new person. Okay, so you can be a little nervous, a little scared. And uh, yeah, you're cow the counselor. Prince, you'll be the nervous teenager. Okay, great. Okay. So Prince, and we need a counselor also. We need a counselor. Sri Radha. Sri Radha. Come on, students. Let's not waste time. Come on, come on. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah, yeah, now I can hear you. OK. All right. So y'all could, uh, so Prince, you are you're afraid to be in front of Sri Radha, or you're nervous, rather. OK? And uh, Sri Radha, what you're doing is to, uh, what you're trying when we're looking at attending skills, it is to look at how he can be comfortable okay how can prince be comfortable um, to to just begin a conversation with you all right okay let's start start uh, if if you all need to switch on your videos please do that so that it makes a little bit more the others could also see you well okay go ahead prince and sri radha go ahead We're waiting. Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, can hear you. OK. So uh, Prince is not ready, actually. Just Prince to. Uh... No, you don't have to. Uh, uh, you just don't. Do, this is just to show attending Prince. So you don't have to have a problem. You're just nervous and scared to sit in front of this big counselor. OK, you're just nervous and scared. And maybe as you think, you're, you're not saying anything because you're scared. All right, so rather your, uh, your uh, attending is you want to make him comfortable because you want him to feel uh, um, comfortable so that you all can start a conversation. So we're only getting to that, not about a problem. OK, is that clear, Prince? Prince, you are, you're on mute. I can't hear you. Okay. Yeah, could you share that mic? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Prince. Or go ahead, Radha. He's nervous, so he's come and sitting in front of you, not saying anything. So, Radha, you may need to start. Hi, Prince. <laughs> Prince can't hear you. Are you saying anything? Uh, we're just sending audio, ma'am. Just, just a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hi, Prince. Hello. Uh, how are you? I think I'm doing fine. Okay. okay. So uh, you can share something about you. Uh, I don't know what to share. 
So Prince, yes. you, can, you can say something like, I didn't want to come here. My parents are the one who's forced me here. Uh, can you repeat once? You can, because you, you're, you didn't agree to meet the council, although there must be a problem. But it's your parents who forced you, right? So you can say, I didn't want to come here. My parents forced me to come here. So yeah. I don't, I really don't have anything to say. I asked that. Um, Radha, so you speak. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yes, Yes, yes. So, um, how is everything going on? Everything is going right, but I don't know why I'm here. Okay. Actually, you didn't come like by yourself. Someone sent you, right? You got my point. Okay. Uh, I can understand. Actually, I can. Uh, th I can see like when someone actually misunderstand you and uh, send you to the counselor. So. What is the problem actually? Why they send you here? I don't have any problem, but I don't know what's problem with my parents. They send okay, me you can uh, you can uh, tell me that why they are thinking that you have a problem. What is their perspective? I think you should ask them, not me. They have a problem with me, not me. Ma'am, this is a stubborn counseling I got in my own life. <laughs> I can't handle it. You can't handle it. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Prince, when uh, uh, let uh, if your parents were sitting in this room with uh, you, me, uh, and the with you, me, and them, what will your parents say? about uh, bringing you here, Prince? Did you understand the question, Prince? Sorry, I can't see you. That's I'm asking. You have. Ah, Can you okay. repeat? Me? I said. So I'm, I've taken the position of the counselor now. OK. So so Prince, I, I understand that uh, you didn't want to come here, right? Yes. Okay. okay. So are you upset with your parents because they brought you here with a, outside of your will? Yes, I am. You are. I know it can seem unfair, isn't it? No, maybe kind of because, yeah, maybe kind of unfair. Mm, so what were you doing before they brought you here? Um, so what were you doing before? Were you playing football? Were you in your friend's house? What were you doing before they brought you here? Uh, I was just sitting alone in my room. You were sitting just alone in your room? And listening to songs. And listening to music. OK. And the fact that they took you out of a space like that and brought you here must have been very, what, were you angry? Were you sad? What were you feeling? Uh, I was feeling alone. You were feeling alone. So do you, so you feel lonely at times? Yes, I do. Okay. So despite you having your parents and your brother and your sister with you, you feel lonely? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm, I'm sure that must be a difficult feeling, isn't it? Yes, it is. Mm. So what have you done previously to feel, uh, to not feel lonely? What have you done to not feel lonely before? Uh, I never done anything not to feel lonely, but uh, I used to embrace that lonely feeling. You embrace the lonely feeling. Okay. So are you, so I, I hear that uh, you don't like to be lonely? 
No, I like to be lonely. You like to be lonely. Okay, okay. All right. Do your parents see that you being lonely is a problem? Can be. Like, mm. yeah, maybe they see it as a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, Sorry, but you were saying something. They may see it as a problem, but for me, I like having my own space you like it. okay all right so <clears throat> so uh, uh prince uh, i understand that you know uh, you said it's not fair that they brought you here you like to be lonely and uh, i don't want to you know put you in a space where you are uncomfortable right uh, but i have just this one question to you if, yes uh let's suppose your daddy and mummy were sitting here with you and me here okay with us in this uh, room Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> what would you like me to tell your parents? You don't bother him much. Just uh, let him do what he wants to do. Mm -hmm. OK. So you would like, if I, if I was able to say, you would like me to say um, no, that they don't bother you. OK. So have there uh, uh has there been a time previously that you have told them this not to bother you no i didn't you haven't told them because so, i'm scared to say because to you're scared to say. Sure. Uh, okay all right so if i were to uh work with you and help you in any way help you in any way what is it that you would like to do in this situation you told me that you like to embrace loneliness, but still you're scared to tell your parents. So if I, if you and I were able to work together, uh, what kind of help would you like to have, Prince? To stand up for my rights, for my freedom, and speak. Mm. OK. All right. OK, let's stop it here. All right, so, uh, so did. So what did you all notice quickly? I know we are five minutes ahead, but what did you notice? Just some observations, all of you. What did you all notice? Just We're just looking at attending skills, OK? Not the problem. Let's look at attending skills. What did you notice out of those? Uh, I know not too much can happen on a call like this, because you can't, there's no body language and all of that. But what did you notice? Quickly, quickly. If you want your break, let's do it quickly. Anything you all noticed? Yes, Nina, go ahead. Counselor is like very stubborn not to open his heart. Okay. But there's a lot of pain. Yeah, but uh, let's look at the, uh, the skills, OK? More than the counselee. Let's look at the skills that were used to help him open up. So uh, someone's written, the counselor made the teenager feel comfortable, so he began to speak. Yes. Uh -huh. So uh, Anthony says, transparency. So what what was something that the counselor said, or uh, what was it that the counselor? Um, yeah, one is said. One is the position of the counselor that helped. Yes, building the yeah. friendship, right? Uh, yeah, and the counselor is understanding the pain of the counselee, so Correct. she can the counselor can understand. Okay, this counselee is going through tough and and empathize with the. That difficult moment, like coming and sitting like this, is difficult. Right. So she's understanding that. Right, that's right, Nina. Great. Okay. And Sri Radha said, building friendship. Jackin says, words that were supporting of his feelings. So there was a lot of verbal that was used over here. Anything you noticed of the voice? Anything of the vocal, the, the tone of the voice, or something that helped? Uh, maybe I should ask Prince. Prince, what is your experience by just uh, what did you feel as you were talking to the counselor? Actually, like uh, when uh, I like when you are the counselor, uh, I feel actually like I don't know, but the way uh, you sounded, the tone in the voice, actually, it made me 
not to be stubborn or not to give back answer but it's like a smoothing thing to me okay so it was soothing it was yeah. soothing that was there for you right so so here we didn't even go to the problem the only thing that we did over here was to establish a relationship and sometimes it may take a long time to establish that relationship and that's why attending skills are very very important through the um, through the entire process. Okay. Uh, Prince, can you hold on to your question? We will come back after 10 minutes and uh, we will we will start off with the question and carry on. All right. Let's have a break for 10 minutes and come back. So see you soon. 